Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. One of the most obvious problems that we see in real life is some sort of mass that's hanging down from some sort of pivot, whether or not this is string or a pivoting rod or a grandfather clock or a normal clock or just some sort of rope moving in the breeze. We have this mass and we see that it oscillates. It goes back and forth with some angular velocity and some angular acceleration as well. Today, I'd like to take a little bit of a glimpse into a pendulum and its motion to instruct us on a problem that uses radial motion and angular momentum. There's all sorts of ways to do this problem. We're going to start off with defining an i and j vector. Then in red, we're also going to have a radial and angular unit vector. We're going to try to define this problem in terms of these vectors. So let's draw our free body diagram. So here we have our free body diagram. I've identified the tension in the line and I've used the radial unit vectors to define that. And I've also identified the force of gravity and I've used rectangular unit vectors to define that. Our next step is F equals MA. So we say the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. And we're going to be looking at this in vector components before we sum our forces. Let's go ahead and define some angle theta through which the pendulum has swung. In this case, we'll simply sum our forces on the left side. We have negative T ER plus MGI. And on the right hand side, we'll have mass times acceleration. And we'll put this in polar form. R double dot minus R theta dot squared in the R direction plus R theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot in the e theta direction. And for this problem, let's define r here in the drawing. We want to find a way to get rid of this term right here. So let's take the unit vector e theta, and we're going to take the dot product of that times the entire equation. So we have an e theta dotted with an er. That's going to knock out this term. In a corresponding way, it's going to knock out both of these terms as they're orthogonal. And on the left, we're left with mgi dot e theta equals m r theta double dot. And because the radius is not changing in a pendulum, the Coriolis term will go to zero. And we're left with e theta. So by looking at the terms we have set up right here, we know that i dot e theta is simply going to be um, negative sine theta. And on our right, we have mr theta double dot. This is our equation of motion for a pendulum. We can also make an approximation that says the sine of theta is about equal to theta for um, small angles. This makes it easy to solve this analytically. And if we plug this in, we see that g over r theta equals theta double dot. We've seen equations of this form. So we know that, let's say in green, that theta equals a cosine omega t. That's going to be some oscillating type of behavior plus b sine omega t. There's other ways to come up with these, uh, these equations of motion. What we could do is we could say, uh, we could take a look at the total energy. We could say that the total energy is kinetic plus potential. And we could use that fact with all of our geometry down here to come up with an equation of motion. Or we could use the change in angular momentum. We know that that equals the sum of the moments. And in this case, remember, it's a vector and it's always about a point. 
we could use this fact to come up with an equation of motion. And in this case, the gravity is what's supplying the moment. Or the way you, you may have seen this done before is we take a look at the change in linear momentum. Then we know that that is the sum of, the, of all the forces. Either one of these three approaches, well, four if you include mine that I demonstrated to you today, is going to show us that theta double dot equals negative g over r sine theta. In summary, we've taken a look at the pendulum motion, gotten a basic feel of it using our polar unit vectors, and come up with a rough equation of motion that tells us we're going to see some sort of periodic behavior. What are some of the th neat things about this? Well, we see it's acting like some sort of harmonic oscillator, and in this case, omega. Before we've seen it as square root of k over m, we see square root of g over r. So notice the frequency of oscillation doesn't depend on the mass. Rather strange concept. There's all sorts of ways to look at pendulum motion, but I wanted to give you a brief glimpse of it today.